Well, hello everyone and welcome to Health Chats Among Friends. My name is Deidre Kindred. I'm a nurse advocate, educator, and navigator. And I am coming to you tonight with an exciting chat. <laughs> My good friend, Nicole Broadhurst, has come to us and she's going to tell us about who she is, what she does, and how she does it. So Nicole, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are? Yes. Hello, Deidre. First and foremost, thank you so much for inviting me on tonight. I am so excited to be here and happy to share some information with your viewers about medical billing. That's what I do. So I, my name is Nicole Broadhurst and I am a 27 year healthcare professional turned independent patient advocate with a specialty in medical billing. So I teach people and how to save money on their medical bills. And I also do auditing, reviewing, and management of medical bills. So we help families eliminate the stress and frustration of the medical billing departments. That's really what we specialize in doing at Tennessee Health Advocates. So I've been doing that for three years now and I love it. So that's who I am and that's what I do. Wow, that is so amazing. I mean, I, I love it because the independent patient advocacy industry is growing and we all got a story of why. So can you share with us, what's your story of your why? Sure, absolutely. So I have to say that I had this grandeur picture of being able to change the healthcare industry from the inside. And I think most of us that start in healthcare, whether we're patient, um, you know, administrators or nurses or, you know, wherever we start, we always start because we want to help people. That's pretty universal. If you talk to anybody in the, in the, in the industry, um, I learned a long time ago, I'll kind of date myself. I remember when managed care was just getting started. And we all thought that managed care was going to be the answer to a lot of our problems. Um, it didn't turn out that way. And what I found is that um, the inside of the healthcare system was not where I was born to be. I was born to be helping patients and families directly um, without having to be have an allegiance to a health system of some sort. So my story is this. I actually have done a lot of work in hospice and home care. And early on in my career, I was a, medic, a hospice biller. And yeah, so I would submit bills. And part of Part of, part of my job was to call patients and their families and, you know, collect on their accounts, accounts receivable. Um, so I build insurances and then I also did the, the direct billing to patients when it was a private pay or if they had a part that was their responsibility, a co-insurance or a co-pay. And <clears throat> I will never forget the day that I made a phone call and the woman answered the phone and I said, hi, my name is Nicole and I'm calling from ABC hospice. I noticed that you, your mom, there's not been a payment on your mom's account this month. And I was calling to find out when we could, you know, if we needed to make arrangements to, to take care of that. And it was not a half a second before she started screaming at me and said, I can't believe that you're calling me. My mom died five minutes ago and your nurse isn't even here yet. And I stop when I tell that story because I did that. I'm that person. That woman is somewhere today, and the only thing that she remembers about ABC Hospice Agency is that I made that phone call about money five minutes after her mom took her last breath. Yeah. And I'm not a bad person, Deidre. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm human. And so what I took away from that was two things. One, don't ever start a conversation without asking people how they are. Like, just don't ever like. Yeah. We, right. Like that is mm -hmm. the most important thing ever is 
how are you? What's happening? That's, that's the most important thing. And then the second thing of that was, is that I feel like I could never make that up to her or to her family. But what I can do is take that away for other people. Right. And so that's kind of how I got into the whole, you know, the billing part of it is that I'm not a clinician. I can't help with pain assessment. I can't help with, you know, clinical treatment options or, you know, all of those things. But you know what I can do is I can make sure that no patient ever gets a phone call like that again. I can be the intermediary between them and their providers and manage all of their medical bills so that if they're having health issues, then they can focus on their health. They don't have to worry about the financial piece of it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's why I pick what I do. <laughs> First of all, that is a powerful story because I feel like we learn from events such as that, you know, that right. aha moment. And for me, it resonated with me that the bill collectors on the other side of the phone, they're human beings too, but you are a human being full of integrity, compassion, and it made you turn something around to something positive. It's like, oh my goodness, I've learned so much from this mistake. Because how many of us in our lives, we've made mistakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Everybody's yeah. made mistakes. But oh, sure. what did we learn from those mistakes? And you took something that you learned and you turned it into something that is beneficial to others. Because what the service that you provide is amazing. Um, I'm an independent patient advocate, too. And I do not at all say it really slow ever want to do medical billing and color <laughs> right so, yeah if it's medications and talking to your doctors <laughs> yes but i don't want to do is it's just oh and the stress that you are helping to relieve people of right. because the last thing you really want to do and discuss when you or your loved one is going through um a detrimental illness or mm -hmm. disease process and these bills are coming at them. Oh my goodness, how dare, I mean, oh my goodness, the compassion that you got and you did and you developed that and you already had it, but it's just like sometimes bill collectors, it's like, wow, what if yeah. you were in my shoes, mm -hmm. you know? That's right. What if yep. you were in my shoes? So that's such a that's powerful right. story. And I commend you for sharing that. Thank you. And I love what you did with that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think about her every day. I, I really, I do. It's it's interesting. I, I, I think, you know, I couldn't fix it for her, but I feel like right. every day I show up and I do this work, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm making it right, as right as I can, you know, right. as right as I can. And you know, if I were to ever meet her, in fact, I wish that I, I you know, after all this time, I, I, I don't know her name. <laughs> so I wouldn't right. even be able to find right. her, but, but I do love, and, and you're so right. You know, I, right now I just took on a new client and his wife was a victim of a hit and run. Um, and you know, all I keep, and he's actually a res resident. So he's, he's going to be a physician and he just signed oh. on with me because right? He's like, I don't have time, right? I have to get her the, into the best rehab facility. I have to get her the best, you know, she's very young. And um, so he's got a lot of stuff on his plate mm -hmm. to, to actually like on the clinic, clinical side. And he said, I don't have time to make sure that the bills are processing correctly. And is it a car? Is it a car claim, an auto claim, or is it a health claim? And so there are a lot of things and I do feel like I take a lot of stress off and I just don't think that that's something that anybody should have to be. Oh, I know you do. Yeah, I, I mean, something. I can't imagine them because I even see it in on my side, you know, so that caregiver, because I was one of those caregivers. And frankly, when, when my mom was going through what she was going through, 
I handed the medical billing and stuff over to my sister <laughs> who works in finance. So okay. you handle that, you know, and I could take yep. care of, you know, it, it's about building your village. And I just think your That's service right. is so wonderful that people can actually build a village, you know, because yeah. I think sometimes as patient advocates, independent, you know, you would get this, where do you fit in? Who are you? What are you doing here? You know? Right. You know, why are you here? You know, mm -hmm. they got a patient advocate in the hospital, you know? <laughs> right, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, no. Yes. No. You know, so yeah. it's like, you know, for us to be collaborating here and okay. now, you know, it's just like, wow. You know, you yeah. gotta get the word out. You gotta get the yes, word out. Yes, absolutely. So you're, so you're in Tennessee. Yes, ma'am. But yes, you can service nationwide. I can serve nationwide. Yep. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, my business is. So here's a fun fact, Deidre. My business is based in Tennessee, and my husband and I actually live in a travel trailer and travel. So we like I service people all over the country. Like right now, literally right now, we're sitting in the desert in Arizona. Um, oh, wow. yeah, so, so I do, yeah, it's been a great, um, I locally, I do service Tennessee and I'm most familiar with Tennessee's laws and, and insurance regulations. However, I do have clients all over the country and it's really very simple to cross those state lines because the differences are always located in the, in the same place, you know, as far as where do I look to see how this should be covered and what the laws are in that state. So, and I've learned currently I have Florida, New York, Long Island, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Tennessee, Wisconsin, and Missouri. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and so, I have somebody in California right now, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So I love that. So if um, a family member, when do you suggest someone should reach out to you? That's well, yeah. So as soon as the first envelope comes and you open it and you go, I can't, mm. that's the moment. Mm. And here's, here's the thought process on that. I can take a shoebox full of, pa of paper and, and organize it and audit and get it all cleaned up for you. Lots of times people wait until they get a collection notice. I don't suggest that you wait that long. Um, you know, the moment you open the piece of paper and you hear it in your mind, go, Ugh, I can't do this. That's mm -hmm. when to call because the sooner we get it right, the sooner right. I can get it, I can get on top of it. And chances are, it'll be something that I can work out and explain mm -hmm. and get right back so that you can start to manage it. Once it piles up, it takes longer one for me right to review and organize and get through everything and it also takes longer to fix the yeah. other piece of that is is that once it goes into collection now it's being reported on your credit report mm -hmm. and i always tell people don't like it's it's not the end of the world if you haven't seen all of the articles lately but like 80% of Americans have medical debt on their credit report. So mm -hmm. you're not alone. And it's not the end of the world if that happens. And actually, they're, right now, the credit bureaus are discussing removing medical debt from credit Ooh, reports. Yes. So I, yeah, I just, I've been mm. reading the articles and it's coming, I think, which would be great. There is some issues with that because how do you discern, you know, real, real debt, meaning, you know, they, it should have, they should have been paid and they weren't or versus something that should have been paid by insurance. But that's my big rub, quite not, frankly, is that sometimes right now with private, private providers, there's private equity is getting into some of the, you know, physician practices and some of the providers. And as a result, they're not willing to put accounts on hold while I work on them, mm. which means that the accounts continue to age. And when they hit 90 days or 120 days, they turn them over to collections. Mm. 
-hmm. Now, once we get the insurance paid and everything straightened out, then they'll pull it back and take it off of the report. But, but my point is it shouldn't go the, in the first place. In the if, first place, yeah. Because exactly. isn't it hard to get it off? Right. Well, the hospitals can pull it back and it can be pulled off and it's, we can bullseye it off. It's not impossible to do. It can be done, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't have to. And that's a whole nother like conversation about, you know, mm -hmm. the, the ethics of why should we have to ask you to remove something that never should have been reported? Exactly. Insurance exactly. should have paid it. So yes, maybe, and you know, insurances, if you submit a claim, right, it can take, ooh, I see the face, yes, <laughs> <laughs> right? It can take, like, it can take me six months to get a claim correctly processed and adjudicated and paid, but they're reporting the debt in 30 days. So I have a personal rub with that. So the sooner that you feel like you're confused about it, that's when to do it, you know, um, but anytime works. <laughs> yeah. So like when they get their EOB or yep. something like that and it's astronomical and they're like, Ooh, yep. you know, yes. or just having you on board to help them, you know, okay, I got peace of mind knowing that Nicole is going to look through everything and she's going right. to make sure. So you do audits as well. I heard that. I earlier. do. Yes, I do. So, In fact. Yeah. So this is the way that it works is that literally any piece of paper that comes from your insurance company or from a provider or um, a collection agency, anything. I have a secure portal where my clients can upload those documents. Oh. Yeah, so they can upload the documents. I get them, I review them, and then I have a weekly call. So all the mail that you get, you just upload it to me. I organize it. I compare the bill, <clears throat> pardon me, the bill to the EOB cross-reference, make sure that it was coded correctly, make sure that it was paid against your oh, in-network wow, benefits awesome. or if it was supposed to. <clears throat> In fact, I just um, had to do an appeal with Blue Cross of um, North Carolina. A gentleman mm -hmm. had an emergency appendectomy and they, Blue Cross paid the claim, but they paid the surgeon against his out-of-network benefits. Everything else was in-network. And so I had to appeal to Blue Cross to reprocess that claim and, uh, and pay it against his in-network benefits. Right. Right. So did we, and we just got the check. Um, I just saw it right before we jumped on the call that the, the, oh, awesome. the client emailed me and said, Hey, I got my check from blue cross. So we won the appeal. We got the money. Um, so we're almost done with that. But my whole point being is that in the time that you're good getting treatment or you're rehabilitating from an accident or whatever the case may be, you have this, like, you don't have to worry about it. You upload it. I do all of the auditing, all of the review. And then I will say this one, per, this one processed correctly. And this is how much you owe. Okay. And if you're not able to pay that, do you want me to work out a payment plan? Do you want me to like, I do I, like, I do all of that. That's right. Awesome. And so I meet with the clients once a week, just to kind of make sure that they know exactly where we stand with each of the bills mm -hmm. and what's happening with them. So yeah, it's been, it's, I, so it's fun for me, right? <laughs> I'm glad, I'm me. so glad it's fun for you. I, you just have no idea <laughs> and I am not being, you know what, because <laughs> Ooh, I'm so glad it's fun for you because I would not want to do it. I would yeah. not want to do it. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, and it's, it's worth that moment when clients say to me, I had a woman say to me uh, this week on her call, she said at the end of the call, she said, Nicole, you know, I have to tell you, I'm sleeping so much better just knowing that you're going through these pieces of paper, like, yes. you know, and she just lost her husband. So you know, she's got like tons of stuff, but, but just knowing that I, that people sleep a little bit better, like, is, <laughs> doesn't that feel great when you hear it that? Feels, yes. Oh my yeah, goodness. When people, yes. When it's a great tell feeling. You that? Yeah. It's a great feeling. It's like, oh my goodness. When they, when you get those compliments, like even when I was a nurse in a hospital admin, first of all, anyway, when I would get compliments from the patients that I was serving. Yes that's that 
melts my heart. Right. It does because you know you're doing, you're making a difference. But I just right. want to say another thing. Um, people should call you if they have a chronic illness or a chronic diagnosis. Oh, sure. Because sure. you know, don't wait for that ELB or anything to come. Just you were diagnosed with something, you need a change. Sure. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So start building it now, you know, yeah. start calling the resources that are out now absolutely and what's so super duper exciting about our industry is that we are learning and we are growing and we are helping educate each other for when we need help with our clients so being able to be a part of this cutting edge industry now is amazing <laughs> it is it's exciting it's it's very it exciting it it's, is, yes it is. Yeah. so nicole if someone wanted to uh contact you to learn yes. more about your services about the things that you can do for them to help them yep. decipher those complex medical bills yes, or ma'am. just kind of look in there when they don't have the time to do it yes ma'am i would link- you like to yeah, I'm a LinkedIn gal. So Nicole That's Brockers. Where we met. I know, right? <laughs> That's my home. That is like the place to find me. You know, I'm there regularly. I'm in my inbox there. If you want to connect just to connect, right? And and have me in your circle, I would be honored. Um, just so you know that what's going on. In fact, one of the things that I'm going to be doing here in the near future is sharing some health insurance terms. Um, I get a lot of people who um, want me to look at their medical bills and they're really on they really owe the bills because it's a, on part of their deductible or they're out of pocket. And, and so they just don't understand those terms. And so I'm going to start sharing some of those insurance terms and helping people understand what they are a little bit. So check me out on LinkedIn. Absolutely. So are you going to be doing those online or are you going to be doing those yeah. live? Or? Yep. I'm going to be, well, I'm going to start doing some live videos, but now I'm now I've said it. So now I have to do it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So y'all hold me accountable. Connect with me on LinkedIn and then hold me accountable for those terminology videos. And for those who don't have LinkedIn, you have a website that can go to. I do. I do. It's Tennessee Health Advocates.com. And if you can't remember that, the powerful patient.com. That'll get you there too. Oh, awesome. I love that. I love that. Nicole, I, I have to have you back because my mind started clicking when you said you're going to be teaching oh, on medical yeah. tip on those terms. So yeah. we're going to have to get together and strategize and have you back to educate awesome. the communities we serve. That would be great. I would yes, love it. Thanks yes. so much, Deidre. Oh, thank you for what you do. <laughs> uh, thank you for what you do right uh, this is the whole team thing so thank uh-huh, you uh-huh. yeah and thank you everyone for tuning in to health chats among friends where we bring you reputable resources from our local communities tune in next week for another amazing guest and another amazing chat thank you again nicole thank you deidre